Okay, we're recording. So I have a few questions, but it's going to be like a loose conversation. Uh, we're going to aim for 40 minutes, and then I can edit down to 30, um, which is what I usually do for the audio, but the full video is going to be up. Oh, well, uh, I'll have to give a quick little introduction, and then we'll just get started. So bear with me while I do this. Don't mind the hair or the fact that I'm not wearing any makeup. <laughs> not I, at all. I don't expect anyone to wear makeup. I haven't in two months, so that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I do for work, but... Mm -hmm. uh, but I, when you're not working, why would you? Yeah. <laughs> well, also, I forgot this was happening because <laughs> I don't know what day it is anymore. Time is... You were like, I'm ready for you, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's Wednesday. <laughs> Time Wait, is it's such Tuesday. a weird No, it's Wednesday. It's Tuesday. Did we say Wednesday? No, we said we'd reschedule to Wednesday. I offered to reschedule to Wednesday, and you said no, tomorrow's fine. Okay. Either way, yeah. All right, I'm going to do Wait, the quick intro. Wait, is today too? I thought today, today was... No, today it's is Tuesday. When... No, it is. Shit. Okay, all right. This is my life. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I'm at. <laughs> I totally get it. It's time is a weird concept now. Um, we're, we're totally okay. Uh, I could do the intro, but let's just jump into it. I'm feeling it. So uh, sure. yeah, uh, Brandy, thanks for joining me today. Um, and thanks for taking time out of your, out of your busy schedule. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shockingly, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, how are you doing with the pandemic and isolation and all of that how are you how are you feeling how are you faring with it uh it depends day to day um some days I'm very much the this is fine dog and then some days I'm very much the last panel in the this is fine dog that <laughs> most people haven't seen where it's like ah everything's on fire nothing's fine this is awful and he's melting <laughs> um, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Like some days I have great days and some days it's just like everything is terrible and I'm breaking down and crying, <laughs> frankly. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's everybody's experience right now. That's really it. It's really manic. And I think for me as well, I have highs and lows. Like I have days mm -hmm. where it's like, um, I have the opportunity to like pursue producing and, and creating content full time. So I'm going to push myself and do everything I possibly can and have really mm -hmm. productive days and be on top of the world and be really excited about it. And other days it's like, do I have to leave my bed because everything is terrible and I don't know where my next meal is coming from and the world is ending. So what's the you? <laughs> um, yeah, but. I'm I'm glad you seem to be doing well. You look great. Um, That's very nice of you to say because ironically, thank you, 2020. Uh, the reason I'm not wearing, the main reason I'm not wearing any makeup is because I can't put makeup or my contacts in because I woke up with my eyes swollen today. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So because like I'm, I'm currently camming and I'm currently making online content mm -hmm. and I have to keep working, but I also have to look hot so men part with their money. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I just ordered an eye patch from Amazon. <laughs> I'm going to bedazzle it and I'm going to wear it during my shows because I can't put makeup on my eye for the next couple of weeks. Oh, is it allergies or? No, it's, um, it's just like a, like a blocked gland thing. Oh. in my eye yeah strange um, it's apparently fairly common and fairly harmless and it'll go away in a couple of weeks oh great but uh yeah but can't wear makeup can't wear contacts well david bowie pulled off the eye patch so i'm sure you will too Just, thank you yeah. i know bowie but <laughs> just go wild and outrageous with it just cosplay right up Throw the eye patch on, make it work. You could do it. I have faith in you. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your career? What do you do as a performance artist? Sure. So um, I am going to be 37 years old. And for uh, 
17 of those years, I've been naked on the internet in various forms. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been, um, so I'm a cosplayer. Um, I am a former model for Suicide Girls back mm -hmm. in 2004 when that was actually like meant something. Um, I was on Naked News for 10 years. I've been in movies and TV shows. Um, I've done a little bit of stand-up comedy. Um, I, oh Jesus, uh, what else? I make soaps. <laughs> <laughs> um, Soaps and bath bombs. And bath bombs. Yep. Yes. Um, I appreciated those those Legend of Zelda bath bombs. Yeah, I'm glad you liked them. As my little housewarming gift. They were amazing. Yeah. I love the grape soda. Grape soda, everyone says is a trash flavor, but I love it. That I like artificial the smell grape. Oh. Uh, that's fair. That's fair. I'm I'll consume it all. Um, <laughs> you're also a visual artist too. So you do you do photography. Oh, yes. That's yeah. a thing that I started this year before the mm -hmm. pandemic hit. I take so many photos of myself that I got sick of editing my own face and was like, maybe it'll be a nice break for me if I edit other people's faces. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I started taking photos of other people, which um, I like a lot better. I mm -hmm. uh, produced a, a comedy show called Slash Fiction Book Club. Again, I've find that I like being behind the camera better. I'm, I'm a writer, I'm a, a stripper, and now I'm a cam girl. So, and an online content producer. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my life. I've, yeah. That is it. <laughs> yeah. Lot. Um, the online content and camming, is that something you did as a, that you started as a result of the pandemic? Or is that something that you've always sort of done so the online content is actually something that I've, I've been doing for the last three years. Um, mm -hmm. I have a Patreon because when I got started, OnlyFans wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the camming has only been since uh, my club closed down. Right. So that, that was, was just a, a moment of panic of, oh no, I still have to pay bills. <laughs> and... I don't know how to hustle enough to get enough signups to pay for rent in Toronto when I'm supporting two people. Um, what do I do? Mm -hmm. So I, I applied to my free cams, got on and instantly started working. Yeah. Yeah. That's great that that's an option because I know a lot of like, I lost my primary source of income overnight as well. I mm -hmm. had uh, my Facebook banner right now is still my um, my calendar for the last two weeks of March, and it was a full like twelve shows in fourteen days. Um, I was just wrapping up hosting for Toronto Sketch Fest, and everything was like this is really good. Everything's happening, and overnight they all canceled on me. Um, and I was producing a JFL showcase for. Um, mid-march as well that had to cancel so suddenly everything just fell through the cracks and i was like how am i going to pay rent now um so with comedians there's not really that um that outlet for monetizing your content online um, i mean unless you want to do it naked because exactly. there's probably a market for that <laughs> Absolutely. And I think there's a lot, it's funny because a lot of the female and non-binary comedians that I work with, um, when this happened, suddenly they all like flocked to OnlyFans. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's great. I'm just, I'm just wondering if there's a way for them to maybe merge the two. Um, so merge the nakedness and the comedy and to do something really fun with that. Um, and I'm wondering if I mean, you would I've be done interested. It. You have? Tell me about it. Yeah. So <laughs> when I was on Naked News, um, a lot of the, the stuff I wrote was comedic and I was naked, but, mm -hmm. uh, we actually set up a show at Just for Laughs and this was my first time doing comedy ever. 
Um, and it was sold out because it was uh, heavily promoted. Mm -hmm. And I was the first headliner and had to do my entire first set in front of a sold out crowd topless. <laughs> that was your intro to stand up comedy. That was my intro to stand up comedy. It wasn't some open mic with like three very forgiving people who mm -hmm. were struggling themselves. No, it was yuck yucks, um, completely sold out. Like, and. I was the first headliner and everyone was staring at me and I wasn't wearing a shirt. Wow. That's a, that's a literal nightmare. That it is... was, yeah. They tell you to imagine <laughs> um, yourself with, with clothes on and the audience naked when you're Not nervous. The they don't tell around. you what to yeah. do when that shit is reversed. <laughs> oh my God. But you owned it. Uh, I did. Okay. You did. Okay. Yeah. Wow, I couldn't imagine my first stand up set it was about two and a half years ago, and it was an empty bar. Um, the producer was my friend, and I had seven or eight friends in the front row watching me and supporting me and, and cheering me on. It was like the best case scenario, and yours seemed to be the worst case scenario. <laughs> it was terrifying, and then I, I somehow stumbled right from that into Comedy Brawl. Mm -hmm. so again no pressure <laughs> just jump into a competition wow yeah yeah uh after that i was like you know what comedy is terrifying <laughs> but maybe everyone's experience isn't like that i uh, i'm pretty sure no one's experience is like that <laughs> welcome to my life yes nobody jumps on performs topless and then enters comedy brawl no, I still haven't done Comedy Brawl. I signed up for it this year, but it was postponed or canceled or whatever. But um, yeah, I'm not a really competitive person. I can't do festivals. Yeah, I neither am I. <laughs> I, right. I somehow managed to end up in the demifinals and was like, I don't belong here. There are people who are actually funny. <laughs> this is terrifying. How did I fail upwards again? <laughs> That is insane. Absolutely insane. Um, so career-wise, other than obviously having to shift, can you tell me sort of how this isolation has impacted you? Obviously, you've had to move to a new medium. Uh, do you have to, do you have to rethink your performance at all? Or do you do anything really different? Um, um, yeah, so it's, it's more difficult because I'm I'm earning significantly less than I would have at the club. Mm -hmm. I got used to stripper income. Um, and no, I don't have that anymore. And I'm, I'm earning a living, but I'm really having to hustle and I'm really having to be, um, a lot more crass about, okay, guys, this is, you want to get me naked. You got to keep tipping. Like mm -hmm. just like being, aggressive about asking for money which is not something I've ever been comfortable with mm -hmm. like I was I was owed money for for hosting a live show um several years back and I never got paid and I would politely email him for like three months and be like hey so um and so now having to shift that to be more aggressive and to be less coy has been a little uncomfortable. And then there's this, uh, this wonderful thing that happens where people record my cam shows and put them up where mm. they couldn't do that when I was dancing and none of my patrons because I post my, my nudes at such a high tier, like such a high cost. Most of my patrons don't, don't leak that. Right. So to go, you know, on my Twitter and, here oh you know you just got your shows just got posted on this website and then people are they're posting the the free part of my sets but they're charging people for them and it's not the site that I work for mm -hmm. so it's really really angering that people are not only stealing my content but they're profiting from it but they're, they're profiting off it. of it yeah Ugh. it's gross and I've been 
throwing out DMCA takedowns here and there, but nothing's mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. It's oh, really frustrating. That's so frustrating and so disheartening, especially when um, this is something you're doing to get by. And just an see the language of- that is used with me. Like my my shows are purposefully like more funny. Like last night, I did a show from a kiddie pool in my backyard, and we were laughing the entire time. And then I wrapped the entire Fresh Prince uh, theme song. Like it's less sexy and more funny. Like one of my tip items is fake an orgasm in the fictional character of your choice. Like I have boob missiles where I grab my boobs and make pew pew noises while I squish them. Like it's my shows are entertaining first and foremost Mm -hmm. and sexy like dead last. Yeah. Uh, Weird sexy is like my brand. Mm -hmm. Um, So to see my content um, posted elsewhere with really reductive misogynistic language attached to it makes me so angry. And I really want to find these guys and just be left in a room with them and like a hive full of murder hornets and then exit the room. Yeah, I can, I can completely sympathize with that because I'm really hesitant to post a lot of my stand-up material um, and the content that I, I produce is, uh, it's always presented in such a way where this is stand-up comedy that's not misogynistic. It's stand-up comedy for everybody where um, we're not going to be like attacking anyone or punching down. So it's always that unique brand that I'm trying to present with everything that goes under the Comic Sans label. And I'm obsessively controlling of that. So I can imagine some of my content mm-hmm. being reposted like on YouTube with uh, you know, certain terms for trans people or certain identifiers yeah. that I don't identify with as sensationalists, like watch this video of the training comic or something like that, or like the she mm-hmm. comic. Um, and that's one thing, one thing I, uh, I have considered uh, doing uh, naked content or doing um, more NSFW content for my Patreon account and things like that. But uh, especially for trans people, the way that content is reproduced and distributed and the way they're tagged and things like that, it's something that I'm really super uncomfortable with. So I can imagine it sounds like you have a really strong grasp on your brand and the mm-hmm. tone of your content and you want that to be um, you want that to be represented accurately and fairly. Exactly. Um, and I don't want people, other people making money off of my ass. That's why I quit Naked <laughs> Nights. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, oh, and that's so frustrating. And this is, this is another thing is this is a time where, um, <clears throat> where sex workers and performers are able to produce themselves independently in a way that hasn't been done before. Uh, you don't have the large porn production companies and you don't have these distributors. You're able to do it independently uh, from your own home or from your own home studio. And the fact that people are still finding ways to take that material and monetize off of it secondarily is so frustrating. I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh. Uh, Well, I mean, it, there's, unfortunately, there's not really any way to prevent it like people are there are a large group of people out there who are just well we know awful Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they're the one thing that's this is really fostered with me is a sense of community one of my regulars from the club is now one of my regulars on cam and some of my old fans from naked news and some of my patrons have all joined me and we've got a good little room of dudes that just like I'm kind of the facilitator, but they all hang out and they're all friends now and they're from all over the world oh, and they cool. just chat with one another and we talk about movies and, and, uh, and play little games and talk about video games and, and that sort of thing. Cause they're all nerds. Cause they all follow me. Right. Mm-hmm. And like attracts like, and that's kind of been wonderful. Another thing that's been great is, um, I was going through touch burnout working at the club 
because mm-hmm. you're constantly being manhandled. Like I, I'm actually sad. I never got to use it. The, the rules in the club are um, no sexual touching of any kind, which essentially means you can't put your mouth on a girl and you can't um, put your, put your hands on her genitalia. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I am very strict about both of those rules, but I will tell guys, you know, don't lick my boobs. Mm-hmm. But they are large and there's not a lot of room in those booths. So it's hard to like maneuver back enough that they can't get them in their mouths that they want to. Mm-hmm. And so that has happened to me. And I just bought some of that bitter apple stuff that gets, keeps puppies from licking. That's just to spray it on my boobs and wasn't going to warn them. It was just going to say, you know, these are the rules. And then the first person that broke the rules, we would both have regret, but his would last a lot longer. <laughs> the bad taste that's in his mouth is going to last a lot longer than the bad taste that's in mine. I love that. I love that. I that's never got so to creative. Uh, well, hang on to it. Um, <laughs> but uh, Sorry, go ahead. No, no, keep going. But the thing that's great is, is I was going through, through touch burnout, um, working at the club. I didn't want to be touched, Mm -hmm. uh, because I was constantly touched and manhandled and, you know, when it's work, it's work. Mm -hmm. And it really did a number on, um, my sex drive and, and, um, kind of almost my sexuality because it, it made me situationally asexual Mm-hmm. to the point where I just I was not interested in being touched outside of work at all um, and since ironically now that we're in quarantine uh, and I can't do anything about it um, since uh, since being off and not not having that I'm, I'm less touch averse because mm-hmm. I was just getting touch blooded to the point yeah. where I was asking other sex workers, um, I was in the middle of writing an article about it, and then, wow, my attention span switched. I should get back to that. The Brady's yeah, attention span to- channel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I was, I was asking other sex workers, you know, how do you deal with with touch flooding, with um, being constantly overstimulated, and like not having any sense of touch one second do not come in here i am recording this is very important okay sorry it's okay that's okay yeah so you're reaching out to other people for advice on on how to deal with that um well it sounds like a welcome break i don't know i kind of i kind of feel the same where i was just going out every night to a show Mm-hmm. And I feel like I was never home because I had a day job as well. But like, it's different because I just miss it so much. Yeah. I miss, I don't have half the ego I did um, mm-hmm. because it just inflated and fed my narcissism the whole time. So I guess I'm a little more well-rounded because of it, but uh, I just miss the attention. Um. Can you tell me a little bit, I'm curious to know about your, your preparation or your writing process and how you, how you come up with new content. So I know you, you incorporate so much, whether it's cosplay and like geek culture and all of these things. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that process? I'm so curious. Um, usually it's, I have really, really bad insomnia. Mm-hmm. And just as I'm trying to sleep is when my brain is like, you know, it's fun being a genius until four in the morning. Mm. It doesn't matter that you have to work at 9 a.m. Um, so I literally have phone notes filled with like half asleep ramblings that I then try to decipher on the rare days where I've had enough sleep to, you know, process human thought at a normal level and uh and it just kind of comes from there um it's just random things that my 
brain thinks would be funny or thinks is interesting or you know I tend to cosplay a lot of women that I have crushes on Mm -hmm. um it's the it's essentially the bisexuals dilemma over and over again like do I want to be them or do I want to have sex with them (laughs) a little bit of both do I want to explore that with my therapist nope gonna leave that one alone yeah leave that one alone (laughs) I get that so hard. Um, being a trans woman, like I just, I admire women's bodies uh, very objectively because it, you know, it's something that I don't have and I want to acquire. Um, so, yeah, I've had so many conversations with my therapist. I'm just like, am I even attracted to women or am I just envious and and seeking fulfillment um that's hilarious uh who's your who's your favorite who is your favorite person to cosplay so far do you have a favorite uh definitely emma frost Mm -hmm. i don't even like being a blonde but i like being emma frost emma (laughs) frost or jessica rabbit (laughs) anyone who weaponizes their sexuality because honestly that's kind of what i do Mm -hmm. I want mm-hmm. like a full armor build of something yet and I haven't done it because I I tend to like playing because in real life I am a fragile weak human creature. Um yeah, I have a disability and so in my fantasy land it's all like I'm a half orc barbarian who carries, you know, I, this is actually in my in my D&D game. I'm a half orc barbarian that owns a traveling um, monster peep show slash uh, brothel where I pay my monsters very well. (laughs) And I own a gigantic um, battle axe that is shaped like boobies and is magical called the cleavager. (laughs) So any chance I get to play anything with power Mm-hmm. Because I I don't feel like I have a lot of it. Um, mm-hmm. That's yeah, that's that. kind of what I go for. Because I am like a very like if I was a dude, I'd be a douchey alpha male. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> um, I don't know that I'm not a douchey alpha male. To be honest. <laughs> We're working on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I mean, sometimes. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, it's uh, because I'm kind of stuck in this like essentially weak paper body. Um, I want to be things made out of rocks, whether that's you know an omega level mutant or someone who uses their sexuality as a weapon or someone who uses a giant um hammer as a weapon Mm -hmm. like just strong really aggressive characters yeah i love that and i'm glad you mentioned jessica rabbit because i saw some of those photos uh you posted on your instagram and it was just it's just amazing um i love the i love the tones that you um that you utilize in your photos um, and the uses of like good backdrops and, and props and things like that. It's just beautiful uh, color applications and things. I was just blown away with the Jessica Rabbit photos. Um, yeah. So uh, do you, uh, I want to talk a little bit. I s- these are so standard questions. I'm just wondering if some of them are like relevant. Um, so you talked a lot, a little bit about um, about how you have some of your regulars from the club who mm-hmm. um, who have joined you online, and you've developed this little community. Um, what I like to ask performers is like, in the absence of being able to buy tickets for shows or tip your performer or or pay them, um, what 
can your audiences and your fans do to support you um, and su support your career at this time, whether it be monetary? Is there anything that like people can do to stay in touch or, or help you in some way? Sure. I mean, my, my Patreon is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's kind of the the source of my passive income because I have to cancel a lot of camp shows because of my disability. Mm -hmm. um, so working is kind of hit or miss, but I can create content when I feel well and then just release it as I need to. So that's the biggest one. Um, I do custom content for fans. They'll mm -hmm. ask me for, you know, a specific costume or like a specific like type of video and, you know, I'll, I'll make that up for them. Um, I, tipping is great. Uh, just joining my, um, if they don't have a lot of money, just like joining my, my cam show and being, you know, active members in my room is, is great. Mm -hmm. um, word of mouth is amazing. Retweeting, um, reposting, that sort of thing is, is all awesome. I had a dude yesterday out of the blue, just be like, Hey, I know you missed a couple of shows this weekend because you weren't feeling well. Is there anything I can do? And sent me an Amazon gift card. Oh, so like, I'm, I'm pretty lucky because I've got some amazing, like I've got some of the, I don't have a huge fan base, mm -hmm. but the fan base I have is like some of the best people in the world. They're so nice. They're so generous. They're so fun and funny and like great to talk to and respectful and amazing. Um, so like, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I love the community building of, of, uh, all forms of live performance art. And that's mm -hmm. something that I love about stand-up comedy is that at my regular shows, I'll see the same faces mm -hmm. um, coming to see uh, my comics and I'll, I'll just see so many of the same people and I get a lot of great feedback online and a lot of great participation um, when, I, when I ask for feedback and when I launch new uh, content. So that's really super important. And I think it's community that um, is going to get us through, like, like developing a following and having people who are loyal to you. Um, that's going to, to continue to get you through all of this. Um, obviously, you have, so for Patreon and for um, all of the things that you do online, um, mm -hmm. your, your writing and everything. Um, I'm wondering if I can ask you if you have any, because you know comedians, you know mm -hmm. a few of us, you know enough of us and enough of the, the comedy scene. Um, sort of my perspective about stand-up comedy is that for the last decade, we've been um, complete... Um, completely averse to doing online content and doing recorded content and putting our material out there and really promoting ourselves online properly. That's mm -hmm. something we've been resisting for so, so long. Um, comedians always have, uh, you know, negative words to say about YouTubers because they're like, oh, well, they're not comedians. They can only be funny, you know, scripted in front of a camera, but they couldn't do what we do. Um, that's unfair. That's like saying people who write for online blogs aren't writers because they don't write for a print publication. That's really a dinosaur way of thinking. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I've encountered so many comedians who, um, who feel this way. And I'm kind of laughing now because we're, we're currently in an environment where that's the only way that you can create content. Mm -hmm. Now that we don't have clubs, as comedians, we have to, we have to get on TikTok. We have to get on YouTube. We have to start mm -hmm. podcasts like this. Um, I, and I, I really, really sorry. Yeah, hate that kind of like. It's snobby, and it doesn't mm. need to be. A content creator is a content creator, whether they produce live content or they 
produce, you, you know, recorded content or they write or whatever, it's still valid. All forms of creation are valid. I know. I know. <sighs> and, <laughs> I know. And I get so frustrated with people when I talk to them about this, but um, there are mostly nice people out there. Um, yes, sorry, I'm trailing off a little bit, but because now we're in a place where these people are forced to do it or just mm -hmm. not perform or not, you know, exercise those muscles, um, do you, can you offer any advice to comedians on, on how to, um, repackage their content or how to rethink their content? Um, to adapt it to a digital world or uh when it comes to comedy you've already got the bare bones for content creation it should be funny it should be uh energetic and it should be snappy but i mean most people are used to five to seven minute sets mm -hmm. so that's perfect if you're gonna make you know a 40 minute long rant video might not be the best cut it up mm -hmm. but um but I, I feel like comedians are, are uniquely suited to, to move to the online world. The rest of the, the rest of it is just branding and just, you know, making sure that you're staying relevant. Um, because the problem with, with online content is there's something new to stare at every five seconds. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep producing content. You have to keep putting stuff out there. You can't do the same five minute set. Even if it is not your strongest content, you need to keep putting it out there. Um, mm -hmm. Because the more eyes you have on something that maybe doesn't click with you, but clicks with somebody else, they're going to look through and maybe look at the stuff that you, you are more proud of. And they're going to share that. And uh, just, um, I think right now the trick is to, with what we're going through, we are bombarded with so much negative news, negative imagery. We're all scared. We're all um, angry. We're all acting out. We're all feuding. And I think right now the trick to getting people is the animal crossing principle where just be work on upbeat stuff. I know right now it's difficult, but I think being upbeat is is the trick to success even if you want to take a rant and package it that way um because right now people are it's it's the same principle as what was going on during wartime in the 40s when uh the golden age like depression and and wartime um caused the golden age of cinema because everybody was looking for escapism so they all went to they went to the theater and now we're all looking for the same escapism for right. the same reasons. So uh, the more you can keep stuff kind of compelling and upbeat, the better it's going to be. Um, just keep posting on social media. Even if you think you've, you've posted it, you've posted a little too much. Like you really got to embrace your inner narcissist here and mm -hmm. just put this stuff out there, even if it makes you uncomfortable. Um, and the trick is, is consistency. Like just cause one tweet is only going to have so many eyes on it, but you want to, you want to get stuff that's going to get people to comment because when people comment, the algorithm, um, goes up and more people and Instagram or Twitter or whatever says to themselves, gee, this post must be interesting. People are interacting with it. So they show more people. Mm -hmm. Um, so just, you know, engage with people be engaging, be kind of upbeat, be, be consistent, constantly post, put yourself out there. Yeah. That's what's worked for me. Great. That's so, that's so wonderful. And that's really good advice. Yay. Um, yeah, this was a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. I think, yeah, we definitely have a lot to learn. I'd love to have you on again in the future. Um, to, to check in with you and see how everything's going. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be trying to produce a lot more content and everything as well. Um, I'm going to include links to your social media and, and everything with this podcast. We don't have a ton of viewers right now, but 
like you said, the more we put out there, the more we see. Exactly. Um, where can people find you uh, other than those links? Is there is there somewhere you wanted me to direct people to? Or um, My Twitter is twitter.com slash the real overlady. My Instagram is instagram.com slash the overlady. My my free cams is my free cams.com slash overlady. Again, branding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, my Patreon is patreon.com slash the overlady. And then I think I'm the overlady on TikTok as well. I'm really new to that one. Great. Yeah. TikTok is something that I don't know. I haven't really figured out yet. You have to do I'm sort of the same thing. Seven. Yeah. So I'm twice the age of the, <laughs> of the, uh, the regular, I'm probably more than twice the age of the regular TikTok viewer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's probably like not my audience, but again, like you put yourself out there as much as you can. Yeah. So I don't, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing either. <laughs> well, I had, great. sorry. I had somebody comment something, um, something mean on one of the videos that I posted yesterday. And at first I was a little offended. And then I went to their profile and I'm like, okay, you're a child. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be grounded. Mm -hmm. Your words don't matter yet. Yeah. <laughs> Your frontal cortex hasn't developed fully yet. Also, you can't pay for any of my shit, so I don't care what you think. <laughs> Talk to me in five years, Junior. Yeah, until you turn 18, you're nothing to me. Yeah. That's a great way to look at the world. Um, yeah, TikTok is something that, that uh, it's a, it's my first experience with like, being of a, a, a huge generational gap where mm -hmm. I'm I'm the same age as you and it's something where I just stare at my phone and I'm like I don't understand this technology um so that's very humbling and makes me feel old but also uh makes me value what I do a little bit better great well thank you for having this chat with me um I loved spending time outside with you thanks for joining me <laughs> And Thank you for having me. Yes, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. You too. Bye. All right. Bye. Talk soon. Bye.